Hello, Harry here. For all Jog On videos, podcast episodes, and the Jog On shop, head to thisisjogon.com for more and to support what we do. Whether you are watching or listening to this, hello and thank you for joining us. The person I spoke to on this episode is just 12 years old but she is no ordinary 12 year old. But yeah, I always just really enjoyed running and yeah, longer distances. Having broken 20 minutes for the 5K, she has run phenomenal times for her age group, both on the road and track, as well as placing superbly high in cross country championships. I thought that it was the muddiest hilly cross country I'd ever done. And <laughs> he was like, oh no, it's been way muddier. To see Maya Jobbins run is to witness a human who makes the act look effortless. Yeah, I can definitely just keep going, I guess. Following this conversation, a few days later, we ran a park run together in Woking, South East England. And I can tell you that what happened there was nothing short of amazing. There will be a Jog On video telling the story of our run together, and you can find it on the Jog On YouTube channel, linked in the show notes. I first met Maya and her family through a track night at a local club, and was immediately impressed at Maya's total lack of shyness, and it was clear that she possessed the rare ability to walk straight up and say hello to anyone at the start of the evening, and then proceed to shout encouragement to so many runners on their own sessions. I think having a good mentality definitely helps in your races. I I hope you get something from this episode and if you want to help this show out please give us a rating and recommend jog on to a friend so please welcome to jog on the inspiring maya jobbins you know how i was just asking you about the first memory of when you were running yeah how early do you remember going running for the first time my sister was three and i was five and we're at the age where i just didn't want my mum to go away from me because she got every saturday for a run with the other mums and i just didn't want to let her go so like me and my sister would just beg her to not go finally one time she actually has to come along um and she thought i wouldn't be able to keep going she thought i wouldn't enjoy it but i actually ended up really enjoying it and um, I ended up being able to keep going. Um, so since then, I think we just went for a family jog every Saturday up and down the road. Yeah, amazing. And do you think seeing your mum run made you be a bit like, you know how sometimes a daughter can look up to her mum mm. and think, yeah, I'd like to have a go at that. Did you see your mum running? Because your mum's a good runner. Yeah. Like she's run some really nice times. Um, is there a part of you, do you think, when you were super young that you were thinking I'd, I'd quite like to do what my mum's doing because she's running. Honestly, back then, I'm not really sure if I cared about what she was actually doing. I more just cared about being with her. But yeah, once I started, I just really enjoyed it. And after that, I just wanted to keep on running. And did you find quite quickly that you had an ability? Did you, did you find that you were quite good at it or did it take a little while? Well, because I was quite young when I started and we were just going for casual drugs up and down the road like once a week. It wasn't really a serious thing and I wasn't really comparing myself to anybody else. But I think it was maybe year two sports day. And um, I'd been put in for maybe one of the longer events. It might have been 600 or 400 or something. Um, and I just found out that I was able to keep going. And they also put us in for the sprints. And I think I came last in that because I just can't sprint at all. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I always just really enjoyed um, running and yeah, longer distances. You talk about the fact that you didn't find you were naturally quick over the short distances. Was it always one of these things where when you run, Maya, it feels like as much as you are definitely very quick, you could just keep going and going. Has it always felt like you are a bit of an endurance runner like you can just kind of keep going and you want to keep running yeah definitely so for example when we have like the 200s and the 300s in training I just I mean people that I'd beat on the longer ones just would come past me on the shorter ones and um yeah I think that's just naturally how my running style kind of is I'm just not as much built for the shorter ones whereas the longer ones yeah, I can definitely just keep going, I guess. Well, I think the nice thing as well as you're getting older is you are starting to see a little bit more speed. Like mm. you have a 200 meter of 31 seconds flat um, and anyone that knows, yeah. have you gone quicker than that? Well, that was last year. So hope, and I did a 34 in training on Sunday as well. And that wasn't on track. So hopefully I can go faster than that, but um, I don't really know. Which anyone that knows 200 meter times there will know that's actually quite fast. <laughs> Most people can't run that quickly. So Yeah, I actually ran that after a 1200 on the track because um, I just thought I wanted to have a go at one of them because I hadn't done one of them before. Wow. And it's not my prime distance, of course. Um, the 1200 was the one that I was kind of prioritizing. But yeah. yeah. Well, 200 is just fun as well. Like, they're just a chance yeah, to just go fast Exactly, the yeah. And I mean, afterwards, you're not... Well, I don't find myself out of breath, but I think the thing is, because I don't find myself out of breath, I also feel like as hard as I'm pushing myself, I just mm. can't get any faster, even though I'm not tired after it, which is a weird feeling, and it's no an annoying feeling as well. So at the moment, you're running a little bit of track. You've done, obviously, park run and thus some road stuff. And you're also doing cross country. Do you have a favorite surface that you like to run on? Is there something you feel like I really enjoy this the most? Cross country. 
I definitely didn't like the mud. Um, I don't <laughs> think that is my surface because my stride length is quite long hmm. um, and my cadence is quite slow because my stride length is quite long. So it just really didn't suit me. For example, like Parliament Hill, it was just, <laughs> I was, it just drained the energy out of me. But yeah, track, I think um, like hard surfaces, I don't know, I just prefer them and I just feel like I'm able to get my speed up a lot quicker and um, hmm. everything. So I think with the hard, like the harder surface cross countries as well, I definitely prefer better in them but yeah i mean i'd probably say i prefer track also because it's less pressure than cross country i find and some people feel like it's more pressure but i find it less pressure i'd say that's really interesting yeah you're kind of the reverse because i had people even speak to me on this podcast and say that track running to them is i had an olympian on and even she was saying that it feels like a bit of a fishbowl and she feels a lot of pressure on tracks it's quite refreshing to hear someone who enjoys track and i think you're right your style you say you make the most of your stride length you have that kind of long leg striding form and i think that does seem to suit you quite well on those harder surfaces you mentioned parliament hill if it's all right to bring that up parliament hill for people listening who don't know is where they held um, uh, this year, in a, I think it was in February, um, yeah, you February ran Parliament 26th. Hill. And it's the National Cross Country Championships. And you ran in the under 13 girls. What was that race like for you? Yeah, so I placed 24th. and Which I, is still amazing for anyone listening. It's incredible. No, I wasn't very happy with it, to be honest. I mean, I wasn't expecting, but I was hoping to place maybe in the top 20. And I thought, I thought that'd be a reasonable expectation. So when I didn't, I mean... I wasn't that surprised because, to be honest, my cross-country season hadn't been that good before that. It was a bit annoying and it just wasn't my race, to be honest. The course was awful. I'd never run it before because um, COVID in year seven. So obviously we didn't have a cross-country season. So yeah. I was top year under 13, but obviously that was my first time running it. And yeah, I just didn't have the best race. Was it the legs that went or was it your breathing or was it just you didn't like the muddiness? or? Well, um, I think after may- maybe top of the second hill because you go up the first hill, down, across, and then up the second hill. I think in the top of the second hill, I was maybe in 10th to 12th. And then after that, it just went, to be honest. And yeah, I think it was just my legs because I just wasn't used to that at all. Mm. I just never felt anything like it, to be honest. And I found myself just wishing completely that it was over. That I was just... Yeah, and my coaches were um, yelling at me, like, come on, my pick up places, we could do really well on the team, because um, my friend Kitty came third, so obviously she really um, picked that team result up. But yeah, I just didn't have the best race, but it happens. So. And when your legs go, that's the worst thing in the middle of a race, yeah. and you have a kilometre to go, whatever yeah. the distance is, you're trying, but you yeah. just can't get anything out of it. Exactly. I mean, I think it happened to everybody, to be honest, but more th- some more than others I guess it was just insane to be honest I I mean it wasn't as muddy as some other times as well and and um, Mick my coach was saying that which is absolutely crazy because I thought that it was the muddiest hilly cross country I'd ever done and <laughs> he was like oh no it's been way muddier some other times and yeah. I know that I'm gonna have to run double that and even more of the hills when I get into like older age groups um, which is pretty insane so yeah but then there was a cross-country race that you had a while afterwards and you placed pretty well at it, didn't you? That was a better result. Where was that? I'm trying to remember. Um, it was in Loughborough. It was the UK into counties. Um, so I competed for Surrey. So for Mansfield, we'd gone up there the day before because it's like a three-hour drive. And mm. we were like, well, there's not much point going up in the morning. So, um, and we'd stayed somewhere the night before and it was it had really good food. So we stayed there the same place for Loughborough the night before in the intercounties. And honestly, I was just there for the food. Like okay. the chicken was amazing and I wasn't expecting to do well because obviously Parliament Hill wasn't what I was hoping. Yeah. So I was just hoping to improve my place from nationals. And um, yeah, I came third, which was really unexpected. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't what I was expecting at all. And I was really happy just to like kind of end it on a high, I guess. And did it give you some confidence back in your cross-country running, thinking, actually, I can run cross-country? Yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, I kind of felt a bit defeated after Parliament Hill. Like, oh, it's not been my season. Move on to track. At least it's nearly over. But, yeah, after that one, I was just honestly so happy that... I'd placed third and we had one more after that which was English schools Um, and I actually had a decent race in that as well which was also unexpected because I was the year under so yeah I think just having that confidence is almost is almost as important as the actual running just the mentality of it yeah because if you don't have a good mentality going into the race you're just not going to do as well and I think that was also one of the things from Parliament Hill I just hadn't done as well in the races beforehand so I kind of went into it thinking 
I'm not going to do well. <laughs> and I didn't do well. So yeah, I think having a good mentality definitely helps in your races. I think that's very wise and for you to realize that now, because a lot of runners don't realize it until quite late. You know, they might get mm-hmm. to late twenties, early thirties and beyond, and only then start to click. Actually, if I start to look at this a little more positively, I might literally physically, my running will improve. I think mentality is a really big point. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you've done well to clock onto that this early, because <laughs> I think it will serve you well on the, on the subject of mentality. I think one of the things that can happen, and you've probably seen this is in the running world, no one's trying to do it, but just the nature of running, it can put a lot of pressure on a runner because if you do do well, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, how will my job is do at the next race? Do you think you are learning how to get quite good at relaxing and being okay with when there does feel like there's a bit of pressure? Well, I've always found that I've had quite a lot of pressure on myself just from other people and myself as well, just expecting me to do well. Mm-hmm. But I think this cross country season's definitely helped me because I mean, I haven't had the best cross country season. I have never really had a bad season before. I'd had a bad race before, but I'd never had a bad season. So I think I've just kind of learned that if I do have a bad race or a bad season, it's not the end of the world. And obviously you can pick it up in the most unexpected times. So, yeah. Brilliant. One of the things I want to ask you, Maya, was about other sports. Obviously, for you at the moment, running is the big thing. Is there anything else you've ever really been interested in or has it always felt like I want to run? That's that's my main sport. Well, I guess running's always, of course, as you said, been my main sport. But I also do swimming and I do gymnastics, but that's only once a week. So, yeah, but I tend to do swimming maybe three times a week because... I take running as like much more of a priority. Everybody is like before the swimming race is like, why aren't you scared? Why aren't you nervous? And I'm like, and I just imagine myself on the start line of a cross country race. And I'm just like, well, there's much worse things. And yeah, so I love swimming because it definitely just takes the pressure off and I enjoy it. And people don't expect me to do as well. So I think that's another thing that I am really, really enjoy about it. Yeah, I've never been as naturally good at it. Um, But yeah, I've always really enjoyed it. That's interesting though, that because you don't feel like you're quite as strong at your swimming, it kind of makes you relax more and you can sort of even go to races and and be quite relaxed. That's nice. And maybe there'll come a point when even though you know you're good at running and other people know, you can bring a little bit of that swimming mentality and think, well, I'll treat it like swimming. I'm relaxed at swimming so I can kind of relax my running. That's um, really interesting and probably very good that you keep it up because it's good cross training for you as well. It's something different because you do see people too young specializing very early and just doing one sport and they kind of break apart a little bit when they're older because they've just done that one thing so it's nice that you're mixing it up I just enjoy running as much as I want to do well at it and just to focus on it and just to do well in races so Mark talk a little bit about parkrun now obviously the plan is for you and I to run a parkrun together and we're going to do a jog on video about us running a parkrun you've run a few parkruns and amazingly on Saturday the 14th of August 2021 uh, you ran Rushmore parkrun in 20 minutes and one second they actually wrote about it and they said a fantastic Fantastic number of PBs today, not least from Maya Jobbins, who finished as first female in 2001 and knocked 59 seconds off her PB, and she's only 12. Now, you and I both know, I mean, it's so annoying when you're just outside of a time, but were you able to have a good mindset about it and think, well, I've got lots of time to improve that and smash the sub 20 one day? Well, honestly, um, after I saw that time, I was annoyed I knew that I would be able to go faster eventually and yeah. to smash that 20 minutes of course I would have rather got sub 20 but I didn't mind too much that I didn't that's good that's good that you can see that and you've got the perspective to be like well I've got loads of time I will definitely be able to get there when I want to then on Saturday the 20th of November 2021 you turn up at local park run Alice Holt now for people listening to this that don't know Rushmore pretty flat the whole way Alice Holt hills forest trail very hilly and i've run it myself i've never run a sub 20 alice holt and yet you went there and ran four seconds inside you ran a 1956 which is crazy and that is your park run pb for all park runs that's your fastest park run if anyone who's ever run alice holt will tell you that's not meant to be a pb course so what happened that day i'm not really sure um because i think maybe the time before that i think it was probably a couple of months before that i had a really big mr whippy ice cream 
um because they have like a cafe there um and i got that afterwards as like kind of like a reward so to be honest i was just kind of there for that i wasn't really there for the time i wasn't really there for the park run i was just there for the ice cream um so <laughs> i was um really happy and really surprised that i managed to um get that time and i think i definitely paced myself a lot better because the time before i went way too quickly on the first downhill mm. and um as you said it's really hilly so i just kind of died on the hills which is a stupid mistake to make i didn't expect it at all like i stopped my watch i saw i think i got a 1957 on my watch and i was like is this right have i like is it have i accidentally paused it like somewhere in the middle yeah. and like turned it back on have i lost a couple of seconds like i had absolutely no idea what had happened so i was really worried that when the tires came through it would be like just outside 20 again but yeah it wasn't and i was just really happy about it yeah i i have not run that quickly on Alice Holt, and it makes me slightly concerned for when we run woking park run together that you have a 1956 on that course what are you going to do at woking which is much quicker so I will let you set the pace and hopefully I can cling on for dear life. Um, how do you want to approach it? It's three laps. Do you want to just pick people off? Do you want to see how you feel after 2K? How would you like to do it? I would just like to start off at maybe a reasonable place, hopefully inside four minutes probably, and maybe just able to turn it up a notch. And I always find for myself that the third and the fourth K is the slowest and the hardest especially the third because it's like oh i'm just over halfway yeah. mm -hmm. keep it consistent i guess but yeah pick it up on the last 2k i'd say but start off at a reasonable pace it's very hard to say because you're so far away are you just kind of taking every day as it comes or is there a goal one day of running some bigger distances do you ever watch the 10ks the half marathons and the marathons and think one day i think i might like to do some bigger distances how do you look at it well i mean i'm only 12 as you said so i'm just taking it one day as it comes and i mean i like track and i like longer distances i just don't want to take it too seriously right now because obviously i'm just so young that there's no point <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i just want to enjoy it and i mean i guess what just kind of naturally becomes my distance well yeah absolutely i think that's a nice way you don't force it just see what comes naturally well maya it's been really great to talk to you thank you so much for speaking with me i think you've got a great mentality a great attitude towards your running and you have time on your side absolutely you've got all this time to work at it and uh, learn how to deal with that and as you pointed out mentality is huge in running people treat it as this just this physical thing and actually there's this whole mental aspect to it as well i think you've got a very healthy mindset for someone so young so i wish you all the best i really look forward to seeing what happens with you in the next few years it's gonna be exciting to follow your running career and thank you very much for coming on yes thank you harry for inviting me make sure you check out that video of maya and i running a park run together on the main jog on youtube channel we produce podcast episodes and videos to connect people through a love of running and adventure to find out more or to purchase our running kit from the jog on shop check us out at thisisjogon.com i'm harry morgan always run and this is jog on mm -hmm.